Hello, friends. Welcome to our service of morning prayer for Trinity Sunday. It's June 12th, 2022. Today is the feast of the Blessed Holy Trinity. Today, our service takes the form of the Book of Alternative service, Services for Canada. And so let us begin. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O God, you will not despise. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. And let them return to the Lord and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep us in eternal life, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. God rules over all the earth. O oh, come, let us worship. The Lord is our refuse and strength. O oh, come, let us worship. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. O oh, come, let us worship. And so today, our first reading will be from the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verses 1 to 4, and 22 to 31. Does not wisdom cry out and, un and understanding lift up her voice? She takes her stand on the top of the high hill, beside the way, where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way, before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting, from the beginning, before there was ever an earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth, and there was no fountains abounding by water. Before the mountains were settled, before the hills, I was brought forth. While as yet he had not made the earth, or the fields, or the primal dust of the world. When he prepared the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep. When he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep. When he assigned to the sea its limit so that the waters would not transgress his command. 
when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was beside him as a master of cra master craftsman, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing always before him, rejoicing in his in his inhabited world. And my delight was the sons of men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm number eight. And uh, here it is a psalm of David. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. Out of the mouths of infants and children, your majesty is praised above the heavens. You have set up a stronghold against your adversaries to quell the enemy and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses. What is man that you should be mindful of him? the Son of Man, that you should seek him out. You have made him little lower than the angels. You adore, adorn him with glory and honor. You give him majesty over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatsoever walks in the paths of the sea. O Lord, our governor, how exalted is your name in all the world. So friends, let us pray together. Blessed are you, creator of heaven and earth, amid the immensity of the universe. You are mindful of us and seek us out. Blessed are you for the gifts of, gift of your son, who humbled himself to share our life, that we might be raised with him to glory and splendor. Blessed be your holy name, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And so our New Testament reading for today comes from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. St. Paul writes, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulations that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope. Now hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, who has who who has been given to us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So friends, the gospel reading for today is from the gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. So St. John writes, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now, says the Lord. However, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. 
all things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and declare it to you. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to thee, O Christ. And so friends, I speak in the name of the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, friends, today, I think we, we are called to grapple with one of the great mysteries of the church, one of the great mysteries of the Christian faith. How could the one God be three in one and one in three? A few days ago, as I was uh, riding actually in the front of a hearse on the way to, uh, to a burial, uh, the uh, funeral director asked me an interesting question. He asked, is the one in three and three in one, is that a metaphor? Is it a symbol, is it symbolism for who God is? My answer, in typical theological school fashion, I guess, uh, uh, is all of that and more. All of that and more. You know, today we celebrate the feast of the Holy of the Holy Trinity, the three in one, and one in three. Today, we are not being asked to celebrate the birth of a saint or a special person in the life of the church. We're not asked to remember the martyrdom or the beheading of anyone uh, in particular. Trinity Sunday is one of the few festivals in the church that commemorates something other than a special event, happening or activity to do with the lives of individuals or of some group or another. We're called today as Christians and as Anglicans to think about the very nature of God and who God is. Not just who God is to us, but who God is. The Holy Trinity, three natures in one God, is all of that and more. I, I look at the Holy Trinity in the same way I look at uh, my relationships with those around me. Let's give my mother as an example. My mother d died about uh, nine years ago. In my life, as with most of us, my mom was the, uh, the, the primary caregiver for me and my brother. Michael, uh, and my brother's name is Michael, until we were uh, old enough to take care of ourselves, especially when our dad was uh, away in theological college. Uh, our mom had a teaching degree from Hamilton Normal College, which, uh, uh, <laughs> which is now uh, the McMaster University uh, School of Education. She had a master's in special education from the University of Maryland. It was working on a doctorate at the time of her death. She was a primary school teacher for 47 years. She was an organist, a choir master, a piano teacher, and worked in a variety of groups uh, within the church and within the community. She was a daughter, a sister, a friend, and neighbor. She was a citizen of Bermuda. To my, to my dad, she was Winifred. Wife, sweetheart, companion, 
sometimes his conscience. She had many friends and colleagues from around the world and occupied many different roles uh, during her lifetime. But to my brother and me, she was just mom. So it is with God. God may play many, many, many roles in our lives and may be seen differently by each one of us. But in the end, God is still God. The one who has created all that is seen and unseen. In our church, we see God as the triune God. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, in the person of the one true God. We are Catholic, but not Roman Catholic. And to help us to better understand what that means, we turn to the Scripture. The readings appointed for Trinity Sunday in, in this particular year are Proverbs 8, which we just uh, read from, Psalm number 8, Romans, Romans 5, 1 to 5, and the Gospel and Gospel of John, chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. The first of those readings, Proverbs 8, outlines the foretelling of the coming of the Messiah into the world. While the book of Proverbs has little or no reference to Israel itself, it does constitute some of the earliest wisdom writings of, of the ancient Jewish philosophy. Wisdom, says the scribe, calls us to herself. Does not wisdom call and does not un and does not understanding raise her voice. To you, O people, I call, and my cry is to all that live. Through the book of Proverbs, we are told that before every other creation, every other created thing, God's first action was that of wisdom. Before the beginning of all creation, there was wisdom. When there were no depths and no sky, wisdom was brought forth. When God shaped the mountains and the hills and fields and soil was made whole, wisdom was right beside him as the master builder. So whether you believe in the creation story as a literal account or an his historic event, or you see it as a myth or legend which points to a much greater and more profound truth. The fact is that out of emptiness, darkness, and chaos, God utters the words of creation. But even before all that was brought into existence, there was pure wisdom. Out of the wisdom of God, all creation has come into being. The earth, the moon, and the stars, and all that is in the heavens and in the deepest of the deep. The radiating from our Creator is pure wisdom. For people of faith, that wisdom was, is, and will always be Jesus the Christ. Let me say that again. For people of faith, that wisdom was, is, and will always be Jesus the Christ. The ultimate expression of God's love and grace, therefore, is the Word made flesh. Jesus the Son of God, the very outpouring of God's wisdom in creation. Through the work of the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus is made to dwell among us, to redeem us from our own sinful, self-centered nature, and to be an example of how chaos, death, 
and spiritual destruction can be overcome for all eternity. St. Paul bring, brings us echoes of that same message in Romans chapter 5, reminding us that God's grace is poured out, poured out in abundance on all creation through Christ Jesus, and that through faith we gain a hope far beyond that which we could ever ask or imagine. When we believe in the cause of Christ, we are able to stand firm with character and endurance, knowing that the Holy Spirit sent from God by Jesus himself will sustain us as faithful servants of the Most High God. Paul is, uh, I'd say, pretty emphatic. For people of faith in the one true God, the only logical response to that, to what life throws at us, must be to extend God's saving love in the example of Jesus of Nazareth. Especially, especially to those who we might not think deserve that love. <laughs> I guess we are called to love our neighbor as we would wish to be loved. Through Christ Jesus, we are provided with the most concrete example of how we too can shape our own lives grounded in the love peace, mercy, justice, and faith of God. Through Christ Jesus, our God also demonstrates to us that we do not stand alone in our faith, for we have the one God revealed to us in three distinct ways to help us. God the Father, who has created all that is seen and unseen. God the Son, who has redeemed all creation and saved us from our own worldly, self-centered, selfish nature. And God the Holy Spirit, who sustains, energizes, strengthens, and inspires us each and every day to be the very people we were born to be. Jesus said, I will send you the Holy Spirit from the Father. He will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. He will take what is mine and declare it to you. As Psalm 8 reminds us, we are then called to be good stewards of all that God has created. Through Christ Jesus, the Spirit of God makes us willing participants in the continuing and ever-folding story of God's love and grace in the world. In our trials and tribulations, we are not alone. In our sorrows and our pain, we are not alone. In our celebrations and in our joys, we are not alone. And in our mercy, justice, love, and peace, we are not alone. So let us come full circle to where we began. The message of the Holy Trinity, which we celebrate today, is that we have a role as Christians and as Anglicans in honoring Christ's call to new life grounded in faith. Our faith shows us that our God occupies many roles and yet is the same God who loves and cares for all creation. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Friends, let us be worthy of the sacrifice made by the one God who dwelt among us, who sacrificed for us, and who is with us day to day, minute by minute, 
hour by hour, to the end of time. Amen. And now to him who is able to be in, to do immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, through the work of the Holy Spirit, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. So now let us uh, recite the Apostles' Creed as an affirmation of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So friends, let us pray today for the church, for Her Majesty the Queen and all in authority for the world around us, for our local communities wherever we, we, we might be found, for those in need, and for those of our brothers and sisters who have departed this life. We especially pray for, for our brothers and sisters in, in Ukraine, that they might be strengthened and fortified by the love and grace and mercy of God. That they be steadfast in their faith, even in the midst of devastation and hurt. Let us pray to God, the Holy Spirit, saying, Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, creator, and renew the face of the earth. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, counselor, and touch our lips that we might, might proclaim your, your word. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come power from on high, make us agents of peace and ministers of wholeness. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, breath of God, give life to the dry bones of this exiled age and make us a living people, holy and free. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, wisdom and truth, strengthen us in the risk of faith. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit, and strengthen our brothers and sisters who, as unworthy as we are, have asked us to pray for them. We pray for Steve and Jane and Danny and Anne, for Paul, for Lawrence and Audrey, for Julie, for Eunice, for Jenny, for Ethel, for Tom, for Everett, for Jesse and John and Peggy, for Blake and Louise, for Donnie and Joyce, for Michael and Libby, for Lois and Carol, for Mike, for Jenna, for Laudia, for Velma, for Diane, for Hilda, for Jean and Reverend Kent, for Catherine, for Marcel, for Lawrence, for Clarence, for baby Edward, for Ronnie, for Olive, for Andre, and for anyone else known to us or unknown who are in need of God's healing health today.
And so today, let us pray for all those, all those who feel the, the movement of God in their lives. Almighty God, you've given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications to you. And you've promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together, you will hear their requests. Fulfill now our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come eternal life. For you, Father, are good and loving. And we glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now the Collect for Trinity Sunday. Father, we praise you. Through your Word and Holy Spirit, you created all things. You reveal your salvation in all the world by sending to us Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. Through your Holy Spirit, you give us a share in your life and love. Fill us with the vision of your glory, that we may always serve and praise you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And so, friends, as we bring this short time of worship and celebration to a close, let us remember the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives and in our world. Let us see the face of Christ in everyone we meet. And may the face of Christ be seen in us as we, tra as we transfer ourselves through this world. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look, may the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace from this day forward and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen.